Case is one of our uh, national board certified teachers. That's one of our, we're lucky to have as one of our team members for the learning liaisons. And without further ado, I'll turn it over to you, Ken. Great, thank you so much, Jason. I really appreciate that. And again, I'm Kim Case, and I'm going to be turning off my uh, webcam shortly just to give us a little more real estate. And I'm having some issues here in the room with light. It's either too much light and it um, activates the iris in the webcam or not enough light. But anyway, you can see my picture elsewhere. That's not a big issue. Um, if you do get a chance, I would like you to fill out the little survey uh, polling question over here on the right hand side if your school allows students to use cell phones in the classroom if you're a classroom teacher. And I want to welcome each and every one of you tonight for taking time out of your uh, busy week. I'm, some of you may be finishing up your school year or you may have just finished. So I really appreciate that. Well, let me go ahead and stop my webcam. We'll get started. And you might want to go ahead and grab your uh, cell phone and keep it handy so we can go over some things. And again, as Jason mentioned, the web link, a lot of that information um, that I'm going to share with you is already in the web link. There's also a live binder and a resource document that has all of the resources that I'm going to talk about tonight. And if we run out of time, there's additional resources in both the, the document and the live binder that you can explore at your, um, at your leisure. So let's go ahead and get started and talk about what does using a cell phone as an instructional tool look like in the classroom. And one of the first things that um, I like to do with my students is to do research. And one of the, the easiest things to ha show and have teachers do in the classroom is to use their cell phone to ask a question. And right now, Chow Chow is my favorite one, but right now if you have Sprint or Verizon or T-Mobile, you have to use their app in order to get information or their website. You used to be able to just text to that number and then they would give a response to any cell phone provider. Right now it's been just AT&T. So if you have AT&T, you can text your message, your question to ChaCha or to the Google um, short code number and ask a question and they'll give you the answer. Like what's the population of San Antonio, Texas? In this case, um, you can to ChaCha if you have AT&T or you can go online at ChaCha.com. You can ask the question, what is the learning liaison.com? And then they're going to get, send you via a text message to your phone. And as long as you have free text messaging, there's no cost to use either one of those, whether you use ChaCha Google. Um, another alternative is students can text a friend or parent um, or one another and then share the, the results that they get with the class. But that's one of the ways that you can start out very briefly using a cell phone for just a quick research um, and question. Another tool that you might want to consider using is iPadio. And iPadio.com is a website where you set up an account, you use your cell phones to call in, and then you can create a blog post. With, and they call those phone casts. And there are lots of things that you can do in your phone cast. You can do oral book reviews. You can do interviews. You can leave announcements. One good thing is they can cross post into Blogger. They can uh, WordPress, EduBlog. Um, if you're working with foreign language students, this is a great tool as well because you can create your phone cast in a, one in your the language that you're teaching. And then the students can respond um, in writing or however you want them to in that language or in English, whichever you prefer. 
but this is just another tool that you can have access to. And if you're out on a field trip, students can also call in and create a phone cast um, if you're like out in the field somewhere. Another tool that I like to use is called Locomoda, and it used to be called Wafiti. And so this is one that I would like everybody to do right now with me. If you have your cell phone handy, you're going to text to the, instead of a phone number, it's going to be 87884. And then at the very beginning of your message, you're going to type at loca81. 751, like it's showing on the screen. And I'd like you to type the favorite thing that you like to do with your cell phone, whether it's play games, uh, message, um, find restaurants. And what it's going to do is it's going to immediately send the responses in real time into what they call a Wafiti or a Locomoda uh, board. And if you sign up for an account at their website with an, a .edu, um, sometimes a .org email address as well, then you get what they call a teacher account. And you can have students anonymously um, send in and give you feedback on different questions. And what I like about it is that it is anonymous. And it gives really funny kind of um, Names. They're usually like a color and a num and a strange animal or something. So if you were to click on that Wafiti Locomoto board link right there with the 9610, if you click on the slide, it will take you to the cell phones as instructional tools. And so if you notice, we have somebody who posted, and we don't know who Sapphire. Expects, but it gives you a color and some other weird name. And they love to use their cell phone to check Facebook and Twitter. And so you can use this as a way and post the board. And then students can see all the different responses of to whatever question you ask. So as long as they type in correctly the, the like the phone number, the 87884, and then start their message with at loca, and then it tells you whatever your board number to use right there at the top. Um, then you can have all kinds of responses, and it does it in real time, and it shows you right then and there. So um, you can also give the link to your students, so if you're not in your classroom, they can see the responses and see the different ideas that other people are sharing. So if you'll click back into the classroom, the little green icon, the little green and white icon, that should be at the bottom right in your dock or of your taskbar. And that used to be called Wafiti, and now it's called Locomoda. But it's really a great little tool for anonymous feedback. And another one that I like to use is called Cell Block. And what this does is you can upload and send in pictures or videos, and it creates what a slideshow. And you can keep these public, or you can keep them private. You can have it on a specific topic, especially if you're on a field trip, um, like to the botanical gardens, or if you're studying uh, something in wildlife or water conservation and you're out by a stream. Um, there are tremendous things that you can do with it and a variety of things. And you can post it on blogs, website, anywhere that you can put in an embed code. And <laughs> you're a sapphire, Paula? And what I really like about it is it's, it's also, again, in real time. And as long as your image that you send in and I forgot the size for the video. Um, but as long as your image is less than 10 megabytes, then it will automatically feed it into the slideshow. And it takes JPEGs, GIFs, the bitmaps, and the pings. And you can also send in very short video clips as long as they fit those different uh, types. And 
what I'd like you to do now is take any picture, that, um, like where you are, uh, take a picture of your cell phone, um, if, you're, if you have a webcam on, um, and email it in, text in your picture to lltutors at cellblock.com, like there on the, on the uh, slide. And just send in any type of picture. It could be your dog, your children, whatever you'd like to share. And then when you're ready, if you click that link, cellblock.com, watch, and a bunch of characters, that's going to take you to the cell block. Now, if you want to share this with parents or um, live without giving that link, you know, to save some time, you would just have them go to the cellblock.com website. And then look for the LL Tutors, or I have it called the Learning Liaisons Cell Block. And then you can see that slideshow in action. And you can see the pictures that have already been submitted into the slideshow. And what's, what's great about it is it's real time, and you can have it on different topics, and people can continue to add to it, and you can embed it and share it um, over and over. So if you want to click on the link from that slide, it's also in the live binder, so you can look at it later if you like. Um, but you'll be able to see the, the pictures that people text in. And right now there's just one showing. That's the one that I uh, texted in with the logo. But if you have a, a picture that's a small enough size, then you can uh, text that in. And over time, it will accumulate all of the pictures. And then you just refresh it, and it continues to uh, update itself. So if you click on that link, let's go back to the main room here. You can click on at the bottom of your screen, the little green and white um, icon. And then. Um, one of the blogging posts or blogging platforms that's really great to use from your uh, cell phone is Tumblr, tumblr.com. And it doesn't look like it's a word, but it's pronounced Tumblr. And Yahoo just bought them, and they one of their statements was that they bought it and they promised not to mess it up. So one thing that's great is you can use Tumblr from any type of phone, a Windows phone, an Android, or an iPhone device, like an iPad, an iTouch as well. And you can post a variety of things. You can post text. You can post pictures, a quote. You can share uh, audio and video files, as well as chat using different um, chat platforms right there within Tumblr within the, the, your account. And it's really convenient, and again, if you're like out on a field trip, um, for you to be able to share and accumulate pictures and to show kind of what your students did that day. Or if you have a math project or you wanted the, the students to show like what are some uh, examples of a sphere in the real world you know, you, they might show pictures of a basketball and so forth. And they can take those things and write about it as well as post a picture or video and then have a discussion about those things as well, all within Tumblr and all from their cell phone. So they don't have to be at school in order to complete this activity. Um, and they don't all have to be together. So that's a great tool. Um, and that. Again, all of these things are in the Live Finder. Another one is Audioboo, and it's audioboo.com. And this is where you can record. These are just audio files. And your free account allows you to create an audio recording, but it's limited to three minutes. And they call them boos. Um, you can follow other people that already have an Audioboo channel. You can link your. Uh, Boo channel to a variety of blogging platforms and wikis and websites. Um, you can get a pro account and then you can have a longer uh, audio file. But if you're working with students, three minutes usually 
um, is ample enough time, um, especially if they're just kind of recording and you're going to maybe multiple stops on a field trip or multiple locations on a campus trip or to the lab or they have multiple steps in a math problem, they can reflect upon each step and then create what they call an audio boo or a boo and three minutes is plenty times in, in, in that information. So uh, that's one thing that you'll want to check out and it's and all of the things that I'm showing you are free with your cell phone. And how many of you ask your students polling questions using like a clicker system? Um, if you can raise your hand if you do. Some don't have clicker systems, so what you can do, great. Um, this is a, a way that you can poll, and this system here allows you to poll like up to 200 people, and this is a free um, free product, and they, you get an immediate response in real time. One also good thing is it generates a QR code for each poll, so they can scan it and then input their information as well. Or you can go on your browser, on your cell phone, or your computer, and to vot.rs, that's the website, and then you'll put this code. And I'll show you on the next slide. It's a little bit bigger. And the code is 237893. Or if you have the QR code app on your uh, cell phone, and I'll talk about those a little bit later, you can just scan that QR code and it'll take you directly to the uh, where you can type in your um, the code and that code is what takes you to that specific poll question and in this case do you use polling in your classroom with your students select A if you do and you can participate live right now with us select B if you don't, and if you're not sure what polling is, or you've never used it, then you can collect, you would just click C. And then I'm going to click on the web link. And it should open up in your browser. And it will show us the results. And you can have a dark background, or you can have a light background. But the key is going to the vot.rs and putting in the code. In this case, it's 237893. And then you'll be able to see the code. And you can download the, the polling results and embed it in different things and um, do a variety of things with this. But I like that it's real time. I like that it's free. And I like that. Um, that you can have up to 200 people because like Poll Anywhere and some of the other ones, um, they allow you to have maybe just 35 responses where this allows you to have unlimited polls and up to 200 responses per poll. So it's really a great free resource for you to, uh, to use. And again, you can export out that or share it and have people respond just by using that QR code like I posted here. So let's come on back to the classroom, to the Adobe room. And another resource, you couldn't see the overall uh, results. OK. Um, if you click in the box, the web links, and then click Browse to, it should take you right to the results. And I clicked on it. I'm not sure why it didn't automatically take you there. But um, if you click Browse to, it would take you. Oh, that was for a different one. I apologize. This one, this one was, are you an online tutor and instructor? I apologize. I had the wrong one. But you'll, you see the process. I just had the wrong one because I change it each time I do a session. So I apologize. 
Thank you for pointing that out, Allison. And the next one that I wanted to share that you might already be familiar with is kick.com. It's a way that you can, and there are a variety of these different types of apps, but I just happened to select this one to share with you. Um, you can take any short video recording um, and easily upload it, you, just like you would to Facebook or YouTube. Uh, you set up your account, you just start recording, and then you just easily upload it. It's very quick and very easy to use. And it's great if you're doing like an interview or you're interviewing some experts or you're out on a field trip and somebody is explaining something specific to your students, you can record that and then upload it and then review it later with your students. So um, it's a great tool. There's a lot of things that you can do with it and it's available on uh, as an app or a website. And you can access it from a computer or just about any type of mobile device, cell phone, smartphone. And it is, again, free. And that's what I like about it is that it's free. And another tool is what they call Selly. And Selly is a group texting service that's secure and private. It doesn't share your phone number with the other people in that group. So you can set up a group and have your students respond. In order to join the group, they have to kind of um, answer a question and um, they can search for keywords or search for the teacher or they get a specific code. And you, there are different groups within Selly. Um, I know that the Den had one at one time. Steve Dembo was messing uh, around with some of the Selly groups. And you could join a variety of groups. And what's great, within your Selly group, you, nobody has to download anything. It's free. And uh, the student's phone number is protected as well as your phone number is protected. But it's a great way if somebody wants to take notes and send the notes to everybody, or if you wanted to send an announcement to your group real quickly, you could do that. There are other services that do something similar, but you can. But within Selly, you can ask polling questions within your cell group, um, which some of the other group texting services don't offer that. So um, that's one thing I wanted to, to point out. And uh, the website is cel.ly. And again, all of this is in the live binder for you. It's definitely like Remind 101, but it has the extra capability of polling your students. Um, but it does keep things private, just like Remind 101 does, Allison. So you could use both or either one. It's just, uh, you know whatever works for your setting and however you want to structure it. But the account and to use it is free. And I didn't see that there was any limit to the number of cell groups that you could have, nor the participants in each group. Uh, so that's something to uh, think about. So if you wanted to, I started one. Um, you could click on that link right now. On that, or you could do this later. It's up to you. And then you would text that number. You'll always use that same phone number. And then you just start out your message at LL Tutors. And then you can type a message to everybody that happens to join that specific cell group. So you can join via a URL, or you can send that to them. Yeah, it's a Google Hangout. OK. Thanks, Paula. Appreciate you stopping by. Uh, but Selly, and there are lots of things that you can do with Selly. And it's very easy for the students to join the different cell groups. Another resource is Yodio. And this one, you use a cell phone, but you, can, you would also need to use um, 
a computer, you can take different pictures with your cell phone and you'll upload them to your account and you can collaborate with different students on in different groups and you just set up your account and then the you use your cell phone to record your computer to record the uh, audio portions I'm sorry your cell phone to record the audio portions of a book that you're going to create and then you would use your browser to add in the different pictures. And that's an example right there, that Yodio. If you wanted to click on that right now, you can click on the slide. And it will open in your browser what's the Yodio is called 10 New Teaching Tools. And there is audio, so you'll need to be aware of that. But this is a teacher who's created a narrated slideshow, a narrated book um, that you can that talks about using technology tools. So you can explore that later and listen to it and click on the play button to hear her um, yodio and talking about the different technology tools that she uses. And that resource is also in the Live Binder. So let's come on back to the Adobe Connect room. And remind101.com is what all Allison was talking about is another group um, group texting where you can have your students join and I create an LL tutors group and the phone number that you would use to join the group is the 979 phone number and then any messages you would send them to at LL tutors and again the phone numbers are kept private and if you wanted to send out homework or tech, test reminders and those kinds of things and have it be just from you or to your parents or even to a community if you're a principal, um, however you wanted to structure your Remind 101, it is a free service. So th that's something that you can think about. Yeah, the parents love to have this, you know, uh, just a reminder that there's a test coming up. And I was happened to be looking at their site uh, the, this past February when the Super Bowl was on and Remind 101 on Twitter or on their site, I believe it was Twitter posted, oh, I'm sure that the students really love that. And so when I went back to see what they were talking about, the teacher had sent out that there was going to be a test the next day and then a reminder to study during the Super Bowl. And Remind 101 responded on Twitter saying, oh, I'm sure the students love to get that message during the Super Bowl uh, to his high school students. Uh, but that's one way that you can use it. You know, you can also send out like a trivia question of the day, a math problem of the day, a vocabulary word of the day, um, those kinds of things as well. So that and the Sally, there's just a variety of things that you could do with both of these uh, services. Again, I like that it protects your phone number from your students. And Animoto is one that you might have heard of. You can create uh, slideshows and they have free music clips that are royalty free that you can add in. Uh, you can also add in your own music. Um, and it's really great. You upload your photos to the site. And as a teacher, you can get what they call a pro account. And you can create unlimited videos with no time limit. And then you can download them. But if you don't indicate that you're a teacher and go through the teacher one, right, every six months you have to get it approved again. Um, but they say it's not a problem to get it reapproved. And you create just short little animotos. And if you look down at the bottom where it says Den Impact, um, 
this was a video that I was making for um, the DEN Discovery Educator Network that if you're not familiar with them, they offer great resources. Um, and the DEN is also a free network for educators to, to share resources and ideas. So I encourage you to check out um, discoveryeducation.com and join their network and become what they call a star teacher. And that's just sharing the resources that are in discovery education with others. And you get free little perks and it's really a great thing. But if you click on that video at the bottom, there, Teachers there's use media audio, every day in the classroom with students. Thing. A quote from William Arthur Ward says that the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, the great teacher inspires. Using media helps me to be an inspiring teacher. How do I use media to impact teaching? To engage learners. Excite students. Motivate learners. Encourage curiosity. Connect students, parents, and educators. Stimulate creativity. Simulate real-world activities. Inspire research of new topics. Create new content. Foster community and teamwork. Investigate scientific hypotheses. Explore new technologies. And what is the ultimate impact on teaching and learning? A creative, well-educated digital citizen prepared to use media as part of their own technology toolbox. And so you can just upload your pictures, add narration, or you don't have to add in the, the, the audio portion. But it's great and it's very easy for students to be able to create of their own Animoto um, videos. And if you're starting out and working with teachers, this is a great way um, to get the teacher started using technology because it's very e simple and very easy to use um, and create those things. And then if you, with your educator account, you can download them and, and use them for, export them for offline use. And then you can embed them on a blog, a wiki, or whatever you might have. And so um, the, the one that's in the live binder and the one that we just talked about was the impact of media on teaching and learning. Another one that um, is really easy for students and teachers to use is VoiceThread. You can have a personal account and kind of have like a generic login where everybody uses that login. Or you can have a, what they call a, um, a teacher's account. And they've kind of gone up in price. It's for 50 student accounts underneath yours, those are the prices. But basically you can um, comment on different slides. You can use your computer, microphone, you can use cell phone, you can use the text, or you can upload an audio response on something that you've recorded on your computer. And you just upload pictures that you've taken with your cell phone or any, any uh, camera or whatever that you have access to. Upload those and then you can click and respond. And so if everybody will click on that link that's on the slide right now, that's a voice thread that I made about cell phone instruction using cell phones and once it loads you'll hear me speaking it's, it's very soft you can change that and then if you look at the bottom where it says comment if you click on that, then you can submit either 
a comment, a video comment, record something, type something, or call in with your cell phone. And go to go to the different slides, you click that button in the right hand corner, that arrow. Yes, thank you. Hello, Kim, are you there? I hear it, and I was talking. I apologize. Thank you very much. There you go. <laughs> no, no, I apologize. I thought we lost you. They kind of, uh, you can click on that comment, and on each slide, you upload pictures, and you can use the arrow to go through each of the different slides. And I hope that after the session, you'll um, take time to do that. But you can create them on anything and have a num any number of slides. And you can call in using your cell phone. You can use your computer. You can upload a video clip. And you can one idea of a way to use this with students is that you could create a math, pro show a word problem. And on that slide, the students can show how they solve the problem. And then you can emphasize that there's more than one way to solve uh, math word problems or an algorithm, an equation, um, or what would be the next step in the scientific process and why, or what's your hypothesis and, and why or why not did you choose that hypothesis. But you can download these. And yes, you can call in. And there's an app. Um, I know for the iPad, and I believe that you can play them on the cell phone, but you can definitely call in and uh, record using your cell phone. You can call in and upload your audio comment using your cell phone. Personally, I would have just one account and just give everybody a generic um, login to create them. And then they can use a variety of ways to upload their, their audio comments and share their voice thread with others. And they can call in or um, use their computer, depending on the topic and the way you have it structured. And the next thing is QR codes. Um, you may be uh, familiar with these. And they've become quite popular. And you see them on so many different products now. For a while, they were kind of sparse and limited. But now you see them just about everywhere. And there are so many things that you can do with QR codes. And I have a whole presentation that I have done on the different ways that you can use QR codes. And basically, a QR code is a barcode label, just like when you go to the grocery store and they scan the different items and the groceries. Um, those barcodes are a linear barcode where the data is read in one direction, whereas a QR code is read in two different directions. And they're becoming very colorful. They're becoming, um, you can add in different icons. You can put them on just about anything, you, as long as you can link to uh, that document, whatever you wanted to, to use. The black and white QR code here on the slide um, is created with just a regular QR code creator. I'm going to show you one in just a sec. And the right one is 
what they call a Microsoft tag, and that has to have a specific uh, QR code reader. Um, sometimes this in, in Enigma, um, I recommend that QR code app reader because it's really great. Students can uh, use that. And if you're working with really young students, it's very easy for them to scan using Enigma. And once you activate the app, you just kind of hold the little, there's like these little red squares. You just hold them over the QR code. And you can scan those two QR codes right now on the slide. And they will take you, one will take you to the Microsoft uh, where you can get um, information about Microsoft Tags. The other one will take you to a QR code presentation that I did. And you can have that as a resource. And I did upload all of these slides to SlideShare. And if you look in the web links, that the SlideShare link is in there. So you'll want to make sure that you click on that before you leave the room. But I recommend that you use the Enigma app. And they're putting QR codes on all kinds of things now. Uh, this is one. And I created this one with what they call snap.vu website. And with the SNAP, it gives you analytics for each. Each time, and, um, and it sends you an email each time that code is scanned. And you can post the link with it, or you can just post the, the uh, code. And you can see this code here on the um, cupcake. And if you scan that, it takes you to more information about their bakery. And this gentleman's head here uh, has a QR code. I'm not sure how easy that is to scan. But they're putting it like on chocolate, cookies, um, all kinds of things to advertise and promote. They put them on buildings. Um, they're just everywhere now. And this one over here on the right-hand side is a QR scavenger hunt creator. And what I'd like to do sh is show you real quickly how you can create one. It's very, very simple. Um, one of the, I like the enigma.com. And um, this is, I believe that's in the live binder, i-nigma for the QR code reader. It, because it reads some that are very, very complex and detailed. And other readers don't read them if they um, have a lot of pixels in there in the QR code. And if you go to qrstuff.com, and I put that down in the web link. So if you'll click on that right now, everyone, and then click Browse to it, it should take you to qrstuff.com. And if you scroll down, you'll see on the left-hand side all of the different things that you can link a QR code to. To any website, to a specific Facebook page, to an app, an iTunes, to uh, a text message if you want it to be an email, etc. You can click any of those different things. And if it's a website, you just type in your website. You can also select the different colors, change your colors. And then on the right-hand side, that's it. Once you type in your website, that's your QR code. You can download it, or you can take a screenshot of it. And then you, you've already created your QR code, and then you can share that out. Um, so if you click in that foreground color box, you can change all the different colors. and there's just so many things that you can link um, the QR codes to. And that you can also purchase different things. But basically what I do is I just put it in the color that I want, and then I take a screenshot, or I download the QR code. And then I put, you know, share that QR code in a variety of ways. 
So let's go back into Adobe and the qrstuff.com uh, website is in the uh, live binder and as well as well on the resource document. So, and I think that's one of the easiest ways to make the QR code. Um, you'll notice some QR codes have a, have a bunch of little pixels and not every QR reader will read them if they're very detailed. And the QR stuff creates codes that aren't that detailed so that just about every reader will read it. And if you use the iNigma reader, I haven't had it not read any QR codes, even the very detailed, detailed codes. It reads them. And you can put them on books. You can take old textbooks and link a YouTube video that supports the content, like on a math textbook or world history. You can link it to a speech made by Martin uh, Luther King, if you're talking about something in a world history, you can put them on a worksheet. Um, I have Socratic in my uh, in my um, live binder as one of the assessment tools to use on smartphones and make quizzes. But you can also use these QR codes for um, posting with just about anything. And QR stuff is one of the easiest websites to use. And Marcy mentioned Socratic. And Socratic is very similar. Um, and Nearpod. And there are a variety of assessment resources that you can use using your cell phone. And Study Boost is one of those. And James Parker was in here. James Parker's in here. Um, study booth, you can set up your account and then it's, you can, it's like quiz questions. You can have like a deck of like index cards per se and it sends them to your phone and the kids can study. Um, you can send study tips as well or they can also chat using the different, um, wherever they have accounts all using studybooth.com. And there's a video and there's more information um, on using Study Booth as a tool for um, creating study aids for your students and having them like download questions to their phone and answer. Um, it's similar to Quizlet too as well um, for them to just go through the quizzes and yes, is very uh, similar to, to Quizlet. And answer questions as a practice um, preparation tool for an assessment of, of any type that you might have and create quizzes. And it also has, you know, the chat, the instant message feature within the Study Boost app, um, which Quizlet doesn't have, where you can ask questions and kind of get into a discussion interactive activity within the different um, chats. Oh, I saw that earlier. They've been having some difficulty with their website, but um, if you refresh it or give it some time, it will, um, James is here from their website. Right, and they also have some uh, some questions that others have made and shared at the studybooth.com site. And you can, um, so make sure you use the, the S for the secure site. And download uh, some of the groups that have already, uh, some, like teachers have already made sets on um, different topics and content areas. So make sure that um, you can download those to the phone. The kids can go through those and practice. They can make their own. They can share them. They can, um, or you can do that and then share them with other teachers at the site. So there, there are a lot of features with Study Boost. And I encourage you to check that out. And there's information in the live binder on using Study Boost um, with the cell phones.
and that's great that it things aren't necessarily stored on the phone uh, and taking up the memory. And this is one that a quote that was also in that video that that really speaks to me, and it's by William Arthur Ward. And he states that the mediocre teacher tells, the good teacher explains, the superior teacher demonstrates, and the great teacher inspires. So I hope that I've inspired you to use cell phones and explore them in the classroom and make sure that you aren't violating your AUP or this might stimulate a conversation um, with your tech people on ways that you can use cell phones in the classroom appropriately and get that discussion and the approval process going. And in the Live Binder link, please make sure that you click on that um, so that it opens in your browser. The Live Binder link, the resource document, and the Le Learning Liaisons website. Make sure that you click on those and also the cell phones as instructional tool slide share. Click on those now from this web link over here in the bottom right hand corner so that um, you have access to those links after this session. And even though it is recorded, you can go back and watch it and add to it um, and go over some of these things again. It, those are going to be great resources and I update them so that you can have the latest and there are many more things in there that I haven't been able to mention uh, within this hour time but I do hope that I encourage and there are two books in there uh, one written by Liz Cole about um, case studies on using cell phones in the classroom and the other one's written by Will and Webb and Lisa Nielsen and she's the innovative educator and you might have seen a lot of stuff that she puts out on using um, cell phones in the classroom and she was sharing that in New York what the students do to, their cell phones are so important to them um, and having access to it that they have uh, metal detectors so they can't take them into the school building and put them in their locker so what they do is they stop off at these different uh, carts for a bodega which is like a if you're not in New York a little store uh, a little market and they check in their phone in the morning at the bodega they pay like three to six dollars a day and then after school they pick it up on their way home so that they have it with them on their way home and it's that important uh, for safety reasons as well as it's just important for them to be able to have access right then and there instead of waiting till the students get home and the cell phones are you know ubiquitous even younger students are using cell phones and it's so important to the students that they're willing to pay every day to check their phone in and out so that they can have access to it um, before they're even back at home and not have to wait till they get at home before they can get to their their phone since they can't take them onto their campuses uh, because of the metal detector. And parents use it also as a safety factor. So the parents are paying for the phone, the monthly fees, um, and the minutes or texting or whatever, as well as the $3 a day for 180, 170 days per school year that they, they so um, cell phones are a great tool and a, really save on equipment and software that the campus wouldn't necessarily have to buy and allocate for just by using the students having them bring them in and if they don't have a cell phone they can share for a lot of the resources um, you can do online as well as a backup um, but it's just great to have the cell phone uh, apps and uh, convenient if you're on a field trip or you're doing something that you're not in the classroom and you don't have access to a computer lab right then and there or a laptop cart and so I hope I've inspired you to explore those resources 